This is the Cinematography for Actors podcast. More than a podcast, Cinematography for Actors is a vibrant community devoted to bridging the gap between talent and crew. Each week, our show offers transparent, insightful conversations with industry leaders. We unveil the magic behind the scenes from candid discussions about unique filmmaking processes to in-depth technical exploration. Join us in unraveling the intricacies of filmmaking one episode at a time. It's more than just cameras and lenses. We aim to inspire, educate, and empower as we peel back the curtain on the art of effective storytelling. Now on to the episode. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the CFA podcast. I am one of your co-hosts here, but Haley is back in L.A. doing a podcast herself um, today, which is funny. So um, I am Indian Underhill. I'm here with Scott Cohen, an incredible actor who has a ton of great work coming out, one of which, um, Circumcision, I am seeing tonight, a narrative feature at the Berkshires International Film Festival. And I'm on location today in Lenox, Massachusetts, as Scott has his boot licked by the wonderful... um, (laughs) Rosebud, who is our uh, white lab here today. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm good, Indiana. How are you? I'm so good. And I'm really excited because we've been planning this for a while now to get together. And I'm excited that we're we're here in person to do it because that's like, that's the best. I I don't love the Zoom. I love like being in person and like kind of riffing off each other. So this is great. It's actually very interesting because uh, I don't think I've had an in-person audition in probably six years way before covid and you know i mean self-taping was happening you know before that and you know and being offered things but um i don't think i've ever walked into it i haven't walked into a casting office in probably six seven years and next week i have my first in-person audition i think in in seven years or whatever and i was i'm really psyched about it like my adrenaline is already up but then i started to realize oh no I'll also be in the room with other actors <laughs> <laughs> that are competing for the same part. And it's like the whole idea of getting psyched out and all that kind of stuff. It really kind of plays on you. And is it interesting because, you know, I'm the cinematographer side of, of this business, but is it interesting to see kind of the other actors like aesthetically as well and like the variety of different people going out for a similar part? Or do you ever get like psyched out because you have doppelgangers in there? Yeah, you have. Uh, well, you get psyched out because you have doppelgangers and you, you get psyched out. There's diversity. Yeah. And you don't you don't know what, you know, you're. You try to figure out, well, I'm, you try to hang on to what is singular to you, <laughs> what is unique to you. And if you if you lose that, um, you're just you're lost. I mean, you really wow. kind of you, you have to kind of rediscover your way through that. I mean, it is a I think auditioning is part of the job is to walk in and, and, and be prepared to know what you're doing. But then the other part of the job is to really walk in to a room and understand that what you're bringing to the table is is unique, is singular, and that's what you've worked on, and not to worry about everybody else in the room. It's an enormously difficult job. Yeah. the This is interesting, and I've always found this really interesting about actors and how hard it is, um, is that idea of like, you know, how long have you been in the industry now? 40 years. Okay. So for 40 years, you know, the self tapes, the auditions, what has that been like, like when you used to go in, when you were first starting out, what, what, how did, how has that mentality changed? Was it more that I, you know, cared about how I looked against the other actors or what has changed or have you always been authentic to it? Um, well, I guess, you know, authenticity changes, I think. I mean, I, I imagine myself that I was authentic then. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm authentic now but in a completely different way I think then I mean I remember you know living in New York and uh walking up subway steps and actually having panic attacks walking up subway steps and and, and like being at the top of subway steps and not being able to breathe and like trying why am I not like why am I having a hard time breathing you know and it really was all about nerves going into an audition and I think that you know then I think the audition there was such desperation at that point mm-hmm. where you're like you're just you you're so you just I mean I want to get a job now too but like there's a difference now it's like I kind of think I feel more present mm-hmm. and I'm also more accepting of where I'm at like if I'm if I'm not where they think I should be that's not really my fault it's like I've done whatever I can do to prepare for for the audition and um and that's what I have it's like I mean and so I have I walk away a lot more settled. I mean, then I used to walk away feeling so unsettled and would often call a manager or an agent and say, can I get back in? You know, can you get me back in? And they would be like, can we just find out what they think first? I'm like, I know they hated it. I know it. I know it. I know it. 
and then and usually if usually and, and usually the way it would work is if I hated something they loved it yeah. if I loved something they hated it right so why that happens I have no idea but that's yeah. that's usually what happened and I actually think that's part of like the audition process too because the audition process becomes about you know the idea of um, an, an actor kind of knowing like the, the the easier you feel in it I think there's a certain kind in, in an in-person audition they're not feeling the adrenaline. They're not feeling like a, a, an energy that's yeah. kind of coming across. And I think that's what people feed off of. I think people feed off of that energy. Yeah. Um, so I think if you're if you actually do have nerves, if you if you're kind of um, that's a good thing. That's something that really should live in you and that you shouldn't be afraid of. But but a lot of times the psychology becomes, you know, that you you messed it up. You didn't you didn't really do a good job. Wow. And for those actors that are kind of maybe they are getting invited to their say they started acting during the pandemic when it was all self tapes and now they're getting invited to their like first auditions in person and things like that what are like the tips that you have for them maybe from like a technical or a practical standpoint well let, let me just say first that i've worked actually with a, with a number of people younger people that um that were in school or conservatory or whatever during the pandemic and i've noticed actually that their level of presence is so much greater than what what I experienced a, as a young actor. Um, I, I mean, and their their comfort in front of a camera is was is is ten times more. Wow. I think more than even what I am now because and they're used to being on camera used all the time. To being on camera all the time, and I have I have I, I think two ways. I mean, I think you know I think the self tape concept is is both advantageous and disadvantageous um but i but i but i think that the people that came out of that are really um they're much more well prepared but at the same time i think that what hap- what you know what they one of the things that i feel like is important to remember when you walk into an in-person audition now I don't think those people are expecting what they would see on a self tape. And mm-hmm. if you're if you're prepared like you are for a self tape, then I think you're going to you're you're not going to come into the room having what I said before that energy that kind of creates that that right. kind of um that vibe that's in a room that allows people to kind of see who you really are. Cuz on self tape, you're 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 so practiced. I mean, it's so perfect that it's um you know I don't really think people are seeing who you are. I think people yes. are seeing a kind of a a fan, an image, a fantasy of of what you may be or what you could be or what you might be, but in in in-person uh appointments, it's it is there's no lighting. No. You yeah. know, the camera is not it, it's not a good angle, Mm-mm. I would say 90 percent of the time. And, you know, and it's barely, you know, and, and you can move. I mean, usually and they they either tell you to sit down or stand up. But but, but um, anyway, so my my the pointers, I would think, is are more about the idea of what you expect from an in-person audition Mm -hmm. and what you expected from a self-tape audition and they're two different things and I think being in the room is um allow yourself to be excited by it because that's a really good thing so if you think you're you if you think you're off you're probably not off you're probably just doing like if you if you if you uh if you fuck up it's okay because you know um that's what happens in a, if you're shooting a movie, if you're shooting a TV show, right. you fuck up a lot. And I mean, because I mean, to me, it's all about rehearsal. It's like I, it's it's why I I would much rather do TV and film because to me, the journey is the discovery is the most important part of it, mm-hmm. the most fun. Mm-hmm. And so it always feels like a rehearsal. It never like if it's a performance that feels like it's dead, and it's it's done. So um, so I feel like if you could if you could experience it as a rehearsal then you're you're on your way wow and so recently you know we have been at some of the same film festivals our films have been sharing yeah. some of film festival yeah. posters which is really cool this yeah, is cool. yeah and i think i'm noticing i'm sure it's happened in the past too with us but i've noticed it more now because we've been we've been in the works of getting together and talking when we've been here at berkshire's and recently had a film at the beverly hills film festival i've been noticing a lot of the the press around some movies that you've been doing and then here you know you have circumcision premiering tonight at 8 30 um, a you lot see, of th- you say that title so quickly. And oh yeah, just trippingly off the tongue. Yeah, C- circumcision. Circumcision tonight at eight thirty. Yeah, <laughs> folks, there's nothing crazy about that. Um, it's true. I I noticed that you know these films feel um, they they feel like different, really unique one of a kind characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wonder what it's like to work with one of a kind characters. But I also think it's the writers and directors that are writing them that are also probably pretty unique themselves. What is it like to work with um, 
with different directors. I mean, and maybe some of them newer and some of them, you know, have been in the industry a while. But how does that as an actor work for you working with different directors? Well, um, I used to feel like um, without putting my foot in my mouth, I I used (laughs) to feel like if I wasn't working a director that was smarter than me, then I'm not really that interested. Right. I've come to the place where I think I understand that, you know, it, it's not very helpful to be that arrogant and people, <laughs> most people are smarter than me. So, so, <laughs> I don't so, know. I don't so, know. But I, I, I think that it's, um, I feel like the actor at this stage of my career, that the actor is truly a vessel of, of the director's vision. Mm-hmm. And it is my job to really make what they see come to life. Mm-hmm. And I work really hard at, at making that happen. And um, and oftentimes I think I go beyond what they even think that they're kind of imagining, mm-hmm. um, which I love about what I do because I feel like I, I um, that's the way I work. It's like it's the way I imagine things. It's the way it's like I, I take everything very personally. So if, if someone asks me to do a part, I'm going to really kind of investigate what it means to me mm-hmm. and, and, and try to communicate whatever that is on screen and um but i often find that you know a director that guides me in a way that surprises me is really really fun wow. and um because if i could keep open to that and kind of recognize that oh and i'm not the only one thinking on this set it's like there's somebody else who's thinking on the set and they they wrote it they directed it they know exactly what they want to do with it then um then I really just need to be kind of an open book and, yeah. and, and, and really kind of open my heart, mm-hmm. rip open my skin mm-hmm. and allow them to come in. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, sometimes you don't get anything, but other times you get quite a lot. I mean, with this movie Circumcision, I'm working with the director, Yuri Zeltzer, who is, I think, brilliant. Okay. And, and mm-hmm. I think that he has, you know, he, he's brilliant because he feels like he's... Um, not that he feels, but he's attempting to. He has he has image in his head of what a movie looks like, and so he he talks about that, and he direct. He, that's how he directs, and so I'm interested in in molding my character in relationship to to what he's kind of try, trying to create. Um, other times, it's I love directors that just let me go, yeah, and trust that I have the ability to recognize what a character is recognize what the scene does recognize how my what my voice does in the in the film itself and um and just lets me go Mm -hmm. and and because if somebody lets me do that they they usually have to ring pull me back because i'll i'll do something bigger than what than what is needed (laughs) but but that's okay too and 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 that's I'm, i'm into that um but in the end i find it it is the most interesting thing to me to collaborate with another person yeah. to make a film and it is um i find it uh it's thrilling yeah. it's um it's inspiring mm-hmm. it's uh it's interesting mm-hmm. it it's what makes me um i will do a shitload of research because someone else is telling me what they think and yeah. what they how they think about something um so I, I adore it. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it's one of the reasons that, I, that I'm in this. Um, it, it actually started, I think, I mean, I, I have experiences way, way, way back, but I did a short with uh, a short that my wife, Anastasia Trainer wrote, and she didn't direct the short, but this, we, we did this maybe 30 years ago. Wow. And um, I remember I was doing the scene, I was really struggling, and she whispered in my ear, something that had to do with my motivation in the scene and it literally was like a sentence and it it was like a shot in my brain and it just like it it pushed me like it just made me go to another level and so like that to me yeah is in that moment and it's rare that it happens but in that moment it felt like oh I'm creating art like that's what's happening right now. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of incredible. I have those moments as a DP on set when I'm, you know, whether it's behind monitor or just off set, standing with the director, and and you you know you've captured something that really works. Yeah. And that means that all the pieces of the puzzle have kind of come together from a collaborator standpoint and a storytelling standpoint. And it's one of those incredible moments where you're like, oh, this is why I work in film. Right. You know, right. and because I think oftentimes, you know, 
90% of it is politics and business before we get to the 10% art portion, you know, for a lot of our departments. And, and to, to have that 10% be so much of like, so golden and have weight to it. It's like a, such a wonderful experience. I, I would agree with that. I mean, and it is mainly politics yeah. and business and it's, um, which is unfortunate, but I, and I, and I, you know, cause I teach now and I try to teach, no business and no politics right, right. and and you but you know that people will that's what people will run into yeah um but yeah and i and i think that you know if you're lucky enough to have a career that you ex, you've experienced it like i always say you know the what you're what you're striving for is just to catch a glimpse of what that is yes because th- as soon as you taste it that's that's what you strive for yeah and and you don't you don't get it almost ever no it's true you, you're really just kind of busting through yeah and so but when you do taste it it's like oh that's what it is and, yes. and that's what i always want to strive for yeah you want to keep having it it's, an addiction. it. it's an addiction that's why we're here yeah, totally. working in this tough industry yeah, totally. uh you know I'll, people always used to say this to me and now i feel like i say it all the time is like we can make money doing a lot more things for a lot easier way to make the money and we'll make a lot more money doing those things whether it's a corporate job or whatever it is you know and but we choose to be in this industry for a reason and and so let that reason be those golden moments that yes. we become addicted to yes, I agree. um so yuri seltzer you said yep. for circumcision yeah. as the director what kind of and this might not be singular to this film but what kind of materials did you want from yuri for the character in this film because it's shot in an interesting way correct it's shot like first person yes it's shot first person pov but this movie kind of turned out it was um i mean at first it was um you know i literally was playing um not literally i was playing uh somebody who was the best friend of the person of the of the first first person pov yes and um and that was a pretty easy task it wasn't you know it was (laughs) not it was not difficult i kind of knew what he was heading towards um and the only thing that i was interested in i mean because the because the the topic of the film is strange and and interesting um i really just needed to know from him what 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 do you need from me to in order for the movie to to progress Mm -hmm. and um and um but what happened was that as we as we started shooting there was another character that was kind of developing out of the stuff that i was doing that he had thought about already but i started to say I think this is this would be really cool if we kind of like you know made this into just a whole other character, and um, and that character became the devil. Wow! And um, and then he took um, excerpts of the brothers Karamazov and used that to kind of. That's my favorite book. Oh my god! It's it's it was unbelievable. And that's what tonight is inspired by for some of that character. Yeah. From which brother? All of it or the dad? Uh, the one? No, not the dad. The the um. I forget the brother. I forget the brother. Is that's it the like after. religious one or the like? like I think the, the religious one. I think the religious Yuri? one. Yeah, I think so. I is forget. it Yuri as well? Anyway, but I, I, I oh, I'm going to start fangirling because that's actually, my favorite book of all time. And I so. actually, I actually read it for. I, I read it while we were shooting because I read because I had I never read the books, but I was like, I got to fucking read this book. Oh my god! And, so, and that's like a thousand page book. Yeah, that you're like, like I got to yeah, read this book yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, which I've done before. I've I've been in I've been in I was I was in Europe once shooting shooting a TV series. And I had an audition for Anna Karenina oh my God. back in back in London. Yes, and I, and I read Anna Karenina. I was like, I got to read this book. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's crazy. I ne- didn't get it. But but then wow. and then what happened? Yeah, was that um, the voiceover that he used in while we shot it was done by this guy, and I saw a version of the movie that he uh, used that voiceover, and I said, I think you need somebody that has a, a lot more at stake and invested in in the voice and i i think you're lacking you know that was my feeling yeah and i said why don't you use me (laughs) (laughs) and so he i I ended up doing the voiceover of the uh, yeah so i'm you're the best friend i'm the best i'm the first person pov yes i'm the best friend and i'm the devil and oh, so it's like, so I'm it's, so excited. So it's all weird. So it's like, and, and so it turned, so, so Whoa. his, so my involvement in it became kind of more, uh, as we, as we talk. It's a one man show over yeah, there. It yeah, it became kind of more, one man show. Um, but not really, but, yeah, but, yeah. but, but, but fun, but really yeah. fun and, and really interesting to do. Um, so and, what, infor- so the devil, right? Yeah. 
you know, the thing whenever I think about the devil, the most moving parts for that in art for me, and this is personal, is the seven layers of hell. Sure. And like the depth of that existence, um, Dante's Inferno. For um, Brothers Karamazov, which I'm just amazed that I'm so excited to link it tonight because um, the reason I read Brothers Karamazov was when I was getting into film, I was obsessed with Terrence Malick. You know, everyone can roll their eyes at that because I think everyone is, but you know. And I, I watched Tree of Life when I was 15 and I was like, this is incredible. I didn't know movies could be made this way, you know, in this kind of format with the voiceover, or with the, the play on nature versus, you know, all these... Um, all these dichotomies and I read the Brothers Karamazov because Malik said he was inspired by Brothers Karamazov to make Tree of Life really and each brother in Tree of Life represents one of the ways of life that Dostoevsky oh, wrote no about oh, so and funny. yep no and the relationship between father and influence oh my god I have no idea yeah and all of it is written um in the in the template of what that structure of family looks like um you know and and different content, but still. And so I read that book to make more sense of Tree of Life for me to dig deeper um, because he taught philosophy at MIT and all this and whatever. I'm going into my Malik deep dive. Uh, but Terms Malik taught, taught philosophy at MIT? MIT and Harvard, yeah. I mean, let's fact check it. But yes, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, and he... And so when you say Brothers Karamazov, I can only imagine the amount of material you had to inform yourself of for the devil because, yeah, what what is that process? I've never dove into this part of it but what what is that process like to have a material that's written that is not the script and what parts you you are electively taking for sure. the character I, well i mean in relationship to this movie it was a general it was a cool. general taking cool. Cool. um yeah because i i would have i would have spent way too i i would, I know, I would yeah, have I yeah i wouldn't have had time to yeah. really kind of like yeah um but it, it that is actually always a dilemma. Yes. Um, how much you're taking from 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 resource, yeah. and 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 how much you're bringing. Like I'm. I mean, it's a. Um, I no longer fight about for myself because I actually. I, I I think I've I've done it enough where oh that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, and I'm good. Uh, or that is just useful information that is in it's just it's inside of yes. me and it will come out yeah. simply because it's inside of me yes correct. and and it's um and accepting that and yeah. kind of letting that kind of yeah. like absorb in me then yeah. that's that i think is really the most important part of that yes um unless i really wanted to like take um a phrase um uh, a physical thing that 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 correct. somebody yeah. does yeah um but usually i'm not quite like that i'm usually yeah. kind of like it's the essence that that's happening right. for me um so that that's always kind of an issue, but but I think for that... Okay, we are stoked to shout out our audio sponsor, Deity Microphones. Their S-Mic 2 Pro shotgun mics have impeccable sound clarity, directionality, headphone monitoring, and a user-friendly design. And we're proud to launch our studio with them. Our goal is to bring you educational gems every episode. And with these mics, you can listen to the best quality audio possible wherever you are. To learn more about using Deity Mics for your own podcasting, voiceover, or filming needs, go to deitymic.com. We have some exciting news. CFA has teamed up with We Make Movies to get you a discount on production management services, including access to comprehensive production insurance and workers' comp for your next shoot. Visit wemakemovies.org slash insurance and use code CFA23 on your intake form for 10% off your quote. It really became about the struggle between faith and um, and no faith and, yeah. and, 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 and trying to... Which is that book. Th- yeah. And that's also the tree of life exactly. thing. That's why I dove yeah. into it. Because right. it's the right. dichotomy that people are wrestling with inside Absolutely. as characters yes. and humans. Absolutely. Which makes us relate to them more. Yeah. So Absolutely. it's so interesting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. And so And for me, I mean, you know, playing... It was actually... It ends up being even more interesting because I'm playing the other guy. Yes. Um, yeah. but, I, but I think even while I'm playing... When I when we shot like you know this this devil bit, you know I need to make him human. I need to totally. make him totally three dimensional. For sure. And because that's just who I am. It's yeah. like I can't I can't <laughs> just be yeah the devil. I'm not just, yeah. What does that mean? What does that right? mean exactly? Yeah. Exactly. How do I, exactly. You know, it's been done personified in so many different ways. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And yeah. I would never I would never ever ever. I mean yeah. even what I do is probably like you're you like know, I have to be my devil. Yeah. My version exactly. of what I've interpreted exactly. as the devil. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically I mean so so resources is, yeah. is, is, is a huge thing, but you have to know when. And, and oftentimes resource is distraction, you know, because oftentimes, um, and this is even how I teach. I mean, to me, you know, there's a devil in me. Mm-hmm. And so right. um, it, it's really about me trying to find out, well, what do I want in this scene? And what, do, you know, because it's not that difficult to figure out when, yeah. you, when you know. And so um, 
so for me, it's always about, you know, investigating my personal connection to the material. And hopefully the resource is not becoming a distraction where I'm just like, I'm just focused on the resource. Of course, and yeah. because then you get lost and you're not, you're not really doing what's on the page. Yes. You're doing something that's not on the page. And I mean, that's even like for, like for Shakespeare, you right. know, it's you oh, every, yeah. everything is really in the text. Yes. And so you don't really have to do that much research. But you do sometimes because you need to, well, what does this word mean? What does the sentence mean? How, what is this in context of, you know, but at the same time, it, it, the scene's pretty explanatory. It's yeah. not, it's not that difficult to understand. Yeah. What I'm finding really interesting through my journey of kind of, so, you know, historically DPs are involved with actors, but not on, of course, on the level of, you know, some other department heads and, and with CFA, what I've been learning through my journey selfishly, um, is is how actors work and you know what struggles they're going through and how different actors interpret different texts and and what i found the most interesting thing in the world is um is you're kind of doing your it's a disadvantage or a deficit to like the script or the work if you're just reading the words off the page meaning like you're interpreting it based off someone else's references only or someone else's text or like you're reading a book and you're like well it has to be exactly like this book the beauty comes from informing your own life and life experience as you Mm -hmm. as your actor Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. into the work itself i think crew side actors we don't we love but we don't understand sometimes right we see it as like well there's probably only one way the director wanted this and then you realize that the actor is the one that is blossoming the character taking it from the director and making it its own thing Mm -hmm. and that's why I I tell so many actors I'm like you shouldn't feel upset if you didn't get that role it just meant that that role wasn't the thing you needed at that moment sure you know it's like and I think it's okay to not get things it doesn't mean you didn't do a good job it just means they were looking for something else and that's okay that it wasn't you that was that thing you know what I mean like yeah I mean you know I mean we're all we're all really important and yes. self-important, yeah. <laughs> but it, it it does become you know you really do have to come to at some at some point you have to understand that you you have one you have no control. Yes, the only thing that you can do as an actor is is walk in and do the best you you can Correct. do. Yes, and that's and that's it. It's like I mean, and and you walk away. Yeah. I mean, I say that saying it, but I mean, I never walk yeah. away. Feel I mean, you feel rejected and you feel you know horrible. Yes. Uh, but I think the trick is well, what can I do better? Yeah, do I need to do anything better? But then you, you talk about, I mean, we talked about this earlier. It's like, then you think about balance of life. Yes. And balance of life is really walking away from an audition and, and knowing, you know, I'm hungry. Yeah. I need to get something to eat. Mm-hmm. I need to see my mother. Yeah. I need to call my brother. I need to see my girlfriend. I need to see my boyfriend. Wh- yeah. Whatever. It's yeah. like, I need to walk. I need yes. to just, I need to get rid of this. I yeah. need to shed what just happened. And shedding is a huge thing. I mean, you oh, could that's do... that's interesting. Yeah. And yeah. You, I mean, one... If you've had time to work on it, you, yeah. you've worked on it. Let's say you've worked on it for a week. I mean, it becomes part of you. It's like you're, you've become that character. You're carrying it with you're you. You're carrying with you. You're sleeping with it. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, part of, I think, living a balanced life is actually accepting mm-hmm. that you're going to walk away with residual of the character and that that will live for a few more days. And that's okay, too. Yeah. Because that's actually, you know, you're, that's part of the artistic conception yeah and so you gave birth to something and now you have afterbirth and Mm -hmm. that's that's okay yeah right and so you know and but at the same time when that starts to die out you start to move forward in another direction and find something else to do yeah and oftentimes i think you know balance of life which i've i've struggled with quite a lot is having other things in your life that are that do mean something to you it sounds so cliche but it's like whether it be cooking or 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 totally. whether it be you know raising bees or yeah. whether it be which we're now both doing, yeah, which we're <laughs> both doing or re- whether it's living in a house and cleaning a house or whether it's reading books or watching tv or yeah. or seeing people playing cards yes. or whatever it is that takes you away or if you have a day job that like you know i think often helps like you know because you get to talk to other people that and it are separates it you, separates gives you life experience to inform characters absolutely you will play in the future yes possibly, yes or uh, just your work it, it will always inform yes. you yes everything you live informs what you do yes. i mean i'm a huge proponent that you know everything i do everything yes has to do with acting oh nice i'm the same for like just 
art in general in my yeah. life. Like I'm like when I was younger, I traveled a lot and every single thing I saw or did, I now feel why I am the person I am right. and how it informs when I'm looking through a lens, why I'm shooting it this way yeah. or why I want, you know, that extra inch on the left side of frame to be cut. Like, you know, it's it, everything informs that decision making process. So I, I, I love that you say agree. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I totally, I believe that. And I, I living up in the country now, it's like I have, I build things and I do think I, lots of stuff around the house and I'm, you know, we have chickens and we have bees and we have a dog and we have a lawn and, you know, we have, you know, we cut wood and, you know, I, I built a kiln house and I'm building, a, I'm renovating a barn and, oh but everything, Dream life. but everything yeah. has to do with acting. Yes. Like yeah. my entire experience has to do with, you know, how then I will communicate what it is that I'm living. I, you know, and I often think like social media kind of deteriorates or, or, or disintegrates or kind of just takes away from that experience because you're not necessarily living the experience. You're, you're living it to share it. Yes. I want to live it to absorb it to then share it. Yeah. And I mean, for those that are technical that are listening, it is also like everything you listed can be broken down to the to different skill sets like whether it be physicality or the emotional resonance you have with certain activities or like watching the way bees do their dance before they enter Absolutely. or the way you're harvesting honey or the hexagonal shapes they're making Absolutely. and the integrity of those structures Absolutely. like all of it informs probably things that you can take on maybe like um like a minutia like level and yeah. interpret it into something much bigger to yeah. scale when you need it absolutely yeah I, I, absolutely i mean anna my wife i mean she's, she's like that's what she does yes, <laughs> she's yeah like, she, she absorbs it and puts it out there like yeah. so yeah um i i think that it's um it, i also just think that for, for actors because you do you, you talk about the technical side yes, a lot yeah i mean when i went to i went to college which i didn't go first for for acting mm -hmm. i ended up acting but the the college I went to, one of the greatest things that that they taught was that you, as a as a theater artist, you learned every single department. Yes, I've heard this multiple times. And and yeah. so 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 when I came out, when I was when I the first time I was on a film set, I'm I'm interested in costumes. Love I'm it. interested in grips. I'm interested yeah. in gaffers. Yes. I'm interested in in lighting. I'm interested in ACs. I'm interested in everybody in craft services. Yeah. Everybody's unequal to me. Yes. And everybody has an opinion, yeah. which I'm actually interested in listening to. Yes. Like I'm, nobody, nobody is like, you know. Um, the hierarchy that normally exists. There's no exists. hierarchy yes. to yeah. me. Yeah. And so, I mean, there is. Yes. But there has you know, to be in order for it to work. For, I think, for but... it to work. Yeah. But everybody is, you know, everybody has a job to do. Yeah. And, and uh, to me, my job is to actually understand because my job will be better. Yeah. If I understand everybody else's job. Yes. One, if I, one that I don't get in the way. Two that I could do, I could perform better because I know the context. Like, I know the context. Yeah. I know, you know, I know that a gaffer has to like put something up that yeah. you know that will that will hit me in a certain way. Correct, yeah. You know, I know to grip. I know, you know, there's a exactly. dolly man who's like, you know, who's, or a girl, whatever. Yes. Um, that's like moving something that I need to be. You know, I, I need to be involved with that. Yeah, I need pacing. To, you have to match their pacing. Match their pacing. Yeah, you know, lens every, swap happens. Where do yeah, I move within my frame? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. And it just behooves me to to understand all of that. Mm -hmm. Even more, and I actually ask. I ask, if the more off camera stuff I do, the more I learn about camera. Yeah. Because you know, I'm sitting right next to a camera. Totally. I'm looking at all these buttons. I'm like, yes. what? The and you're seeing what on? the changes have to. Like, you just hear a lens swap normally if you're in front of the camera. You hear, okay, going to 35. You're 35 being called, but if you're off camera looking at what has to happen in that workflow, yeah. you know, the amount of consistency in stop, um, you know, the changing of like the depth of field and how the proximity to the actor and what we're seeing now for context versus what we saw before, what's magnified, what's not. It's it's a really interesting way to inform yourself if you can kind of see that, yeah. right? Yeah. And and yeah. it definitely informs your work. I think so. And I also, I also think it creates respect. Yeah. Right. And, I, and I think, you know, if you want to be respected on set, you, sh you need to respect everybody else. Yeah. And, and I I think, um, but I, I, I also just wanted to say though that because I've worked with tons of DPs, but like the best DPs I've worked with tell me what's being seen yeah. and how it's being seen yeah. and how I can fit into a frame or use a light mm -hmm. in a way yes. that will only create more shadow. And or, that's why we're putting it there, right? Yeah. Like it has a purpose. Yeah. So it's like for my biggest job on set as a DP is is to inform people of the context of why we're doing something because then they can inform their decision making around that, right? Like it, it goes down to like my crew, right? I'll go to the gaffer and I'll say, what we want to do is this. 
I don't say just put that light up, right? Because then if that light doesn't work or for some reason they can't find it, they know what else they can do in order to get that emotion we want out of the shot. And I think it goes for actors too. Like when, when I work with actors, I try and inform them on not a crazy amount of information, but enough to give them context for like, you know, we're on, we're on a 35. So that means, and we're five feet away, you know, we're, we're going to be on like a MCU and I'm excited because this is the shot where this happens and blah, blah, blah. And they know this, but then they're like, oh, interesting. So if I move here, I'm going to be out. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, cool. If I like, I'm doing that back and forth. I was doing in the wide. Is it going to be, you know, am I going to go out of focus too much? Cause you're really shallow. Cause the director wanted to shoot it really shallow and I'll, and I can go yes or no, you know? And I think those fun technical decisions as an actor, I always say to people, I'm like the CFA methodology of like knowing the practical, technical and creative is like, you can choose not to use that. Right. Like I'm not forcing people to, to sit there and understand the technical and, you know, for newer actors, who potentially would be overwhelmed emotionally I'm just like inform yourself like read the book of technical have it in the back of your brain use it if you want it but if it's too much for this we'll adapt with you of course you know because we're there to support you at the end of the day and so I think when you're talking about how how much you and you know from a respect standpoint but how much you get into it and talk to everyone on set it definitely changes the way that you're interacting with the camera because you don't have the space that you normally would on theater i i agree with you yeah. I, I i think i actually like i think i i pay attention to, to to dps and uh assistant camera people more so because i imagine myself you know one day oh i'm gonna be a dp right yeah. and, and and so and i look at how they look at things yeah because dps usually look at things like they're kind of like staring out into the open their their eyes are usually yeah. like laser focused i apologize and, to actors all the time because yeah. i'm like i'm staring kind of through you and yeah, i'm sorry because exactly. they're like what what, yeah. what do i need and i'm like yeah. no i'm just looking at the light on your note you're good yeah. like yeah. I, you know yes and it, it, but i love that look it's like it's a really cool look <laughs> it is so it's yeah. like i'm be like that one day and 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 also i mean because I, I remember you know back in the day when yeah. when when uh cameramen used to use you know use the handles yes and like, you know, the wheels and the yeah. wheels and that was really you know like you just felt like oh i want to be like that man yeah, I wanna, yeah. I, it's like i want to act shoot and light my entire film right and you know that will never happen but but it's like i it I, I, I imagine I myself to be like that yeah i i can see it and um what, with so, a little light meter i know which is like just honestly the best tool in the world but it is funny because when i i love watching dps be portrayed in films like in nope when uh when like the dp's found and he brings his film camera out because it does it's not electronic so it doesn't shut down he's wearing like his little scarf and he's like i need this over yeah. you know and, and it is funny because we are seen as like the high demand people who have to make the shot perfect totally. you know and uh and then there's that that other film that's one of my favorites I'll, I'll remember it and if you haven't seen it I'm gonna recommend it and I'll put it in the description if I remember but it's with um it's with uh oh. Steve Buscemi and he's young and um, New York film uh, it's about I, film yeah, 16 millimeter film yes, and, this, yeah. and Catherine uh, Keener Keener is yeah. in it yeah. and it's all about the making of a yes, film yes. and the DP is once again yes, ridiculous yes, yes, I totally but it's I, so I real yeah. I love yeah. it anyway but um, but yeah the DP perspective on set is hilarious my, my first commercial was as a DP was it? it? yeah it was like I, I, they, it was the very first commercial I did for a Hyundai it, I, you can't see I'm, pretty, I'm sure you can't see it's okay. like, this was like literally this was 35 years ago uh, longer I booked the commercial thought I'd never book a commercial um, went on set and uh, it was this like really famous commercial director yeah and um, he, t- he told me get up on the dolly and, uh, and, and and look through the lens and then come out and look and look yes. outside and I did just that it took literally 45 minutes to shoot yeah right, right. and I was done yeah and I made a, shit a ton, ton of, money. of money commercials we love them yeah i made like 50 grand it was sometimes crazy. i'm like should i just make a commercial you know as if yeah. it was that easy but it's like it's no. it's insane yes. Yes. it's insane yeah um now i know we have to wrap things up in the next seven to ten minutes so i just want to get into what are the things you notice you've been in the industry you said 40 years right mm-hmm. what are the things you do notice from the technical that you've acquired just from being on set so much like what are the things you're asking of directors ad's or dps or you know the gaffer around your, your ac like what are what do those conversations look like for you? Um, I you know, I mean, I I have a lot of curiosity, yeah. so it's like it, to me, it's a, it's a. I mean, I have curiosity about someone's life, yeah, and I'm interested in yes. someone's because I'm usually looking at people, yeah, and I'm always that that's. I mean, this is just me, yeah, and um, I you know, 
I'm always interested in where people come from yeah. and, and how they kind of came to this particular job and what they're, you know, because usually a gaffer is on their way to becoming a DP. Right. And so, so that's, I, I'm interested in that journey and yeah. I'm like that, that's, you know, is this what you're talking about or are you talking about something like kind of else? anything you want to talk about? I, yeah, you can talk about from like a life experience point or like that, what you're talking about, like from a technical, are you asking when you're in front of the yeah, camera, so, like so, lens, yes, lighting, exactly, yeah. like that, whatever so, you want. I, but usually I'm asking, I'm asking because yeah. I'm thinking about making a movie. Yes. And, and, but I, I haven't made a movie, right. but I'm, th I always think about making a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I'm always looking for information that will help me kind of, you know, inform, d inform, yeah. inform, you know, when I need to, when I totally. need to do it. But I'm also interested in, and, and I mean, this is twofold because I think that it's, it is mainly about respect and um, because I ask people questions to really kind of include people in my process, because yeah. usually it's like, you know, the actor's like, you know, there and yeah. uh, we're there and we don't want to, you know, disturb the actor. Um, but I think that I'm usually looking for people to help me feel comfortable in the pragmatic reality of the set, not in my reality of what, right. you know, because I kind of know what my reality is, yeah. but I want to feel comfortable where I want to know that I'm in a safe bubble. In bubble. Yeah. And, and so, so my questions become about what is that doing? How is that affecting me? Well, you're creating that safe space because you are becoming familiar with everything around you. Yeah, I, I hope so. Yes. I hope so. That is Thank definitely, God. that is definitely <laughs> the goal. And I love being inclusive. I think yeah. it's really important for everybody to be, you know, to be inclusive yeah. and, and, and to make sure that everybody feels how I imagine an entire set should be, yeah. which I think is like a family. Collaborative, Collaborative too, right? Yeah. yeah. The, let's talk about that balance for a second. I think a lot of people struggle when they live in like, you know, the large cities for film um, because it feels like you constantly are not doing enough or you constantly have to be doing something. Yeah, yeah. And I know I struggle with that. My therapist recently told me that I need to take 20 minutes a day where I'm not, I'm so productive. So I'm to not be productive and just stare, not journal because that's productive to just like literally stare and like look at something or like be outside, you know? And even through that work of 20 minutes, three times a week, I have like completely <laughs> different balance in my life but I wonder like that balance of you know you live in the country now you have the hobbies activities you know you're obviously have an incredible partnership um how do you navigate you know you're close to New York that's where we are today in Ma uh, Massachusetts how do you navigate that balance like what does that schedule look like what are the logistics around it how have you made it work for you um it doesn't okay Great. You just make it work. Yeah. Great. It really doesn't work. Uh, um, being an actor. Yeah. You, because I'm not, I mean, I think I've been in my life, I've had maybe five years out of a 40 year career where I've, I've known that th two or three jobs ahead of what's, what's going on. Wow. I just never know. Yeah. And so my life is a constant like, oh shit, I have to go. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, especially as you get older and you have more or you're taking care of more. Yeah. Right. And um, I think fortunately for yeah. me, I live with somebody that really understands. Um, she's in the same boat kind of like. And, you know, uh, so we play that together. Mm -hmm. um, That's great. And I think, though, that a lot of it is about the attempt at making your career not part of your ego right and so your ego is not involved in the, and this is probably the most difficult part because as you as you work a lot your identity is based in what you've done right and so but if you're capable of creating your identity or, or owning your identity separate from your career yes then um then your balance will come very easily nice. and you know and you, you'll be able to kind of like know oh that's that and yeah. this is this and i need to pay attention to this and i don't need that right now and um and those decisions i mean i just had to make a decision like a day ago about you know something that came up that i said no to um it just wasn't worth it and really based in the idea that this throws the balance way off right yes for no reason yes yeah there's no plus side yeah. to it. It's just if, but if my ego's in that yeah. and my identity, because I'm not working at the moment, then right. I go off balance. Yeah. And I mean, that unpredictability of our industry and the uncomfort associated with it, discomfort, right? A lot of discomfort. Right? Is 
I guess you rather be have discomfort and not know what's going to happen in a world that you've built around yourself that you love yeah. versus the unpredictability, but you're miserable when you come back home to it, you know? Right. Right. And so I think it's incredible that, yeah, it may not work perfectly, but you're still, you still have like, what, how many films this year? Three or four films? Know, a lot of <laughs> Five films out. coming out this, this, this year? year like... the, this year, all the films that I've done this year, though, that, that I've loved so much is because they've been so unique. So, yes. And, yeah. and they've been because I've, I, I've made no money from them. Right. But I've loved doing them. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and that feels really yeah. good. Yeah. You know, I mean, I made money doing a, a TV series that yeah. comes out in the fall. So it's like, I mean, not a lot, but it's yeah. like. I'm, but I'm, you can I'm, find that balance, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. 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 I love that. I yeah. think I think it's something we have to constantly remind ourselves and like take a deep breath. You know, it's like because it just feels like sometimes you can get stuck in the weeds for so long. And the moment that you feel like you get that job or that moment of whether it's money or like feeling satisfied because you're doing art that you love and maybe you're not like, you know, you have to pick out of the triangle of what you want. Um, that getting out of the weeds feeling for half a second feels so good sometimes. Yep. Yep. And I love that you can find that balance, I think, a little yep. bit, too. Um, so I'm really excited to see Circumcision tonight. And I can't wait to have you um hopefully we can get you to LA to do a workshop soon I'd love to. um manifesting this proposal to come through because i would love to do a longer talk uh, especially with Haley, my actor side of things so, scott thank you so much thank you so much i love what you guys are doing and i would love to participate in any way that you think is uh, appropriate we're gonna make it happen awesome <laughs> thanks so much bye <laughs> join us in bridging the gap between talent and crew Start by subscribing on your preferred podcast platform. Sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on vendor discounts, community events, and new podcast releases, and educate yourself through our free course releases on YouTube. It all starts at cinematographyfractors.com. And if you like this episode, consider leaving a review to make it easier for other listeners to find us.